evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Thank you for joining us and I hope you gain some measure of a feeling of a meeting with God as we worship together this evening. And so let us begin our worship. Beloved, we are coming together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well as for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us bow our heads in silence and remember God's presence with us now as we pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have offended, we have followed too much the, the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare them, them that spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And our psalm this evening is 139 and we're going to read verses 12 to 21. I'm sorry, we're going to read verses 1 to 7. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our lesson this evening is taken from the letter of Paul to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner.
prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to, and to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith towards the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though, I am bold enough in Christ to, to command you to do your duty. Yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, that it, that is my own heart, back to you. I want you to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. Here endeth the lesson. This evening's New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 14, verses 25 to 33. Now large crowds were travelling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose against the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And we're now going to say the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. 
For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is my, who is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The gospel passage that we've just heard is called The Cost of Discipleship. And for good reason, because in it, Jesus takes faith and commitment to another level. He demands complete commitment from us. And there's no caveat, nothing which says family or our, our own desires can be compromised above, can be prioritised above Christ. Our relationship with him has to be our first and foremost priority. Christian faith is not a low-cost, low-risk matter. We can't cherry-pick the good stuff. We can't dip in and out of it when it suits us. Jesus, as we, as we know, used hyperb hyperbole to get his point across. And when he talks about hating family, he's not asking his followers to hate in an emotional sense. He's calling for an undivided loyalty to himself above family loyalties. Even so, that's a great deal to ask, a high cost to pay for one's beliefs. And Jesus wants us to be sure that we can do this, to know what we're undertaking. Jesus uses two parables to illustrate what he's saying. Firstly, he talks of building a tower making the point that no one would commence such a project without preparing a schedule of, ben of envisaged costs, because to do so might result in there not being enough funds to complete the building. How foolish would people think you were if that happened? The second parable is similar. No king or ruler would embark upon waging war against another without first being sure that he has sufficient warriors and equipment. It's common sense, isn't it? We've got to be sure when we, set, when we commit to something that we can fulfil that commitment. We need to understand what we're going into. And Jesus wants that from us. He wants commitment, considered commitment. He wants us to think about the journey we're embarking on and he wants us to understand what it might cost. Can we complete that journey? Do we have sufficient determination, sufficient resources in our spirit? In previous verses in Luke 14, we've heard about the redemption and freedom that Jesus brings and how inclusive God's kingdom is. Today's text reminds us that to have those blessings, we have to make a covenant of our own. Our relationship with Christ has to be reciprocal. No relationship can flourish if it's one way. When we commit to God, we do it voluntarily. And a consequence of that commitment is that, in effect, that we are carrying his cross which potentially involves deliberate sacrifice and exposure to risk and ridicule. None of us know whether we can truly fulfil our commitment. Jesus doesn't ask for any guarantees. I think if he did, 
no one would be able to make them. What he does ask is that we consider in advance what is required of us. And though it doesn't say so in today's passages, we do know when we're thinking about this that we won't be alone. His Holy Spirit will be there to help us, to support us and guide us in our life in Christ. What might the cost be to us today? What might we need to do to ensure we're on track? The currency varies from person to person. We've all got our own individual circumstances. It might involve a redirection of time and power and energy. It might involve a financial commitment. For some, it might even involve changing their vocation. For example, many people leave well-salaried jobs to, to become ordained. Anthony de Mello, in his book The Way to Love, wrote a chapter on this particular passage that we've heard today in which he says that we have to stop clinging to the things society dictates are necessary to happiness. We don't necessarily have to renounce them completely, but we, we have to let go of the hold they have on us. A slightly different way of expressing what we have to do, but it's pretty much what I've been saying to you. Those of you listening to me now are committed Christians. But as I said in a recent sermon on a similar subject, that doesn't behold us to become complacent. We need to give ourselves a personal audit to ensure that Christ continues to be the centre of our lives, the top of our list of priorities, and to be sure that we fully understand what we have committed to. Amen. And now let us say the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. The, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy, O oh, oh Lord, have I'm sorry, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show, show thy mercy on us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not our Holy Spirit from us. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires 
all good counsels and all just works do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And so, let us pray to God, laying before him the things that concern us and which are on our heart. Uncompromising God of power, might and mercy, we are as clay in your hands. Shape us in your image and to your pur purpose. And direct our ways against the evil one, we pray. Help us to obey your commandments in detail and intent, in youth and old age, in our hearts and minds. And let us follow the example of Paul, preparing for succession planning, knowing that the Holy Spirit has prepared the way for leaders to come forward and hold firm. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for your church in its mission. May it be a movement rather than a structure, an inspiration, not a straitjacket, guiding and teaching, learning and praying, always ready to give a lead and form a response, but not to give in to the pressure of a society in flux, a society that has never needed you more. In a world of people who can fail to recognise you, even in themselves, even in each other. Free as a bird, may the Holy Spirit go where he will and change hearts and minds through transforming love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we explore a fraction of the world you have created, may we glimpse your mind, unfathomable God knowing that we can only pick up hints of your glory through the wonder and marvel of your galaxy revealed. Better for us to learn from your Son in all his accessibility and vulnerability. And may we always take care of that part of, our, of your universe where we can still make a difference for future generations by spreading your word and heeding your call. And we pray especially for places in need of hope, places where war is raging, places where there is famine, civ civic unrest. We think of the Ukraine, of the Yemen, of Northern Africa. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the healing of relationships and the afflicted as we remember those in urgent need in this time. We think of those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. Watch over the carers and the comforted, we pray, compassionate Lord. May they feel your love surrounding them and may they come to wholeness and restoration of spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May those who have died be at peace in your closer presence. And we remember especially De Val Valerie Smith's mother, and, and who died recently. Support the mourners in their grief particularly Valerie and David and Jennifer. Support the community in their sorrow. And may, they, may their souls be with you in heaven, in your kingdom, at peace throughout all eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we give you thanks this evening for all that you have given us, all that you are to us. 
Thank you for your creation, for our lives, and as we continue to strive to follow you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And that concludes our worship for this, for this evening. I hope that you've gained some comfort from it. I wish you a peaceful night and a good week ahead. ahead. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.